welcome to my studio. Today I'd love to have a chat and a paint to defend oil painting. Oil painting is one of my favourite mediums but everyone tells me it's scary and I'm here to say it's not. So here are some tips to help you start if you're interested in oil painting. We're going to be painting a miniature portrait and I'm indulging in a little bit of fan art so thank you to my model. Um, which you can see creeping around the edge of my palette. Uh, Alright, so let's start painting. Number one, start simple. To start working in oil, you only need literally two tubes of paint, two colours one dark and one light value. It's the same idea as starting drawing with only a pencil and white paper. You have a dark tone, a dark value, the pencil, and a light value, the white paper. That's literally all you need. You don't need giant starter sets. You don't need, you know, warm and cool tones to start. You just need two. So today I've decided to start with permanent crimson and titanium white. They're both series one colors, cheap as heck, but easy to get used to the medium. Number two, don't buy the whole art shop. <laughs> you really don't need to buy the most expensive materials and accessories to get started. Once you get used to the behavior and feel of the medium of oil paint, you can slowly experiment with new pieces and build a collection. Um, but simple brushes, simple, some soft, some rough brushes are enough to get going. Some rags. I literally chop up every old pair of jeans that I get holes in, so they're perfect rags and I have friends donate them as well. And one medium is really enough to give it a go. With acrylics you can use water to manipulate the paint. Here in oils we use oil. I'm using number one by Art Spectrum. It's a thinned out oil medium. I like that it dries really fast, so that's why I use that one. Okay, tip number three, the hardest one. Just start. Oil painting can be done in literally thousands of different ways. And starting is the hardest part. Artists like Bob Ross teach and aim to help student painters by simplifying complex images like huge expansive landscapes into simple steps. But that doesn't mean that huge expansive landscapes, textural work and layered pieces are the only way to paint. Today I'm doing what's called an alla prima, which is a painting all done in one session and I'm literally starting with a blob of my dark value all over the surface. It's enough to kill that bright white and give me a mid-tone to sort of start on. I'm going to use my light value, my white, and just paint into the red to find where the light hits my model's face and gradually sculpt how the forms sit. So it's a bit different to many other ways other people's paint, but it's enough so I can play with both the colours, I can play with how they're going to sit, and it's going to pull and push back and forth and allow me the complete freedom to play with the paint. Um, instead of drawing with just lines, I'm actually using chunks or adding and subtracting light from the face. So you can see there, I've, I've done chunks on the left and chunks on the right from the two light sources and I'm preserving that dark section down the middle of the face where the shadows lie. This way of painting allows you to just gradually work your way around and gradually find the forms in the face. It's not about trying to get all the detail in one go, you can take your time. Oil paint doesn't dry in five seconds, you can take as long or as little time as you want, use as big a brush or smaller brush as you like. Here I'm bouncing from the eye to the background. It doesn't really matter. So yeah, you can literally paint however you like, take your time and figure it out in your own way. There's no right or wrong. Number four. With oil paint, you can always undo. It's the control Z of art mediums. And it's for that reason I truly love oil paint. By having a slow drying time, usually a few days to touch dry, 
Oil paints allow the artist to continue to move and manipulate the paint over multiple sittings. Or, as I'm doing here, over, a, you know, two hours, three hours, including toilet breaks. <laughs> Um, you can seamlessly add and subtract from what you're creating and allow yourself to really take breaks and have time because th there's nothing worse than getting halfway through a drawing and getting frustrated as not coming together or if you're working to a tight deadline just giving up and going oh it's not going to go the way I want so I'll just give up. So you don't like a mark that you made? You can literally smudge it out. You can pick up a bit of medium on your brush or pick up a dry brush and scrape it off the off the surface. Here I'm working on gesso board which is a wood board with a thin layer of gesso on it so it's a reasonably smooth surface and that makes it so easy to just pull the paint off if I don't like it. You can even use things like cotton tips, those little earbud things you use to clean your ears or you're not meant to use them to clean your ears. You can use those <laughs> to take paint off if you don't like where it's gone down. The pressure of the brush stroke is important to oil paint because with the paint not drying that means you will be able to pick up what's lying underneath. In this style of painting where I've started all on the dark I'm actually using the pressure of the next paintbrush, the next paint stroke, to control how I want to manipulate different areas of the paint. So if I pick up some white and I push really hard it's going to mix with the red that's underneath and create a pink. But if I pick up some white on a clean brush and then put it on with very, very light feathery strokes, it's going to stay bright white because it's not mixing with what's underneath it. So just playing with the pressure of the brush strokes, much less how much you blend back and forth or just let the brush stroke lie, is another way to play with oil paint. And another way to just play with how forgiving it is and how much it just lets you sit there and play all day. Now my next point, it's a little bit different. It's less practical, but I think it's incredibly important. Number five, you don't have to love oil paint. I've grown up with so many friends and artists and I even see other people here on YouTube just complaining how much they hate oils and how essential it is to try it and how the old masters used oils so it's so elite and fantastic and this sort of thing. No, it's just a medium. Oil paint is one way to create art. And yes, it's existed for hundreds of years, thousands even. No, just hundreds. But the reason it's stuck around is just because people have really, some people have really enjoyed using it. And if you don't enjoy using it, you don't have to use it. I guarantee you that there are so many more mediums around nowadays that oil paint, it will continue to become more popular and less popular. It will keep coming and going and that's fine because it's worth experimenting with new things. If Leonardo da Vinci had access to VR sculpting, I guarantee you he would have been all over that because he was into experimenting and doing weird things. Whether it worked or whether it didn't, it was all about the experiment. and. We need to take some pressure off ourselves that just because oil paint has been around for 100 years doesn't mean it's an elite art supply that is essential for everyone to try. It's just one way of working. I really like the results personally, and that's why I pursue it, but it's not for everyone, and that's okay, and you need to be okay with that. Those are my five tips for oil painting. I hope it's helped a few people just go, I'll just give it a go. Or, oh, I hated oil painting. I don't need to give it a go. That's fine. But it's just a medium I really enjoy and I love talking about it. So thank you so much for joining me while I've been painting my wonderful model. 
Uh, I'm really happy with this little study. It's been quite fun to paint. And yeah, join me in the studio whenever you like over on my channel. Thanks. Oh, and don't forget to wash your brushes. <laughs>